Hello there, you beautiful people, and welcome to the only game where bubble juggling is a profession. It is Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever, and today we're looking at a 4v4 played on Adaptive Elgin, and we're going to get right into player introductions, starting with Team 1 up here in the north and ending with Team 2 down here in the south. And let's start in the west and head east, and we're going to begin with the Maroon Aeon Best Faction going first land at 1077 rating. His name is Captain Turtle, and he is rocking this kind of plateaued position as we move over to the orange Aeon going first, second, and third a land, not air. And of course, he has 1,239 rating behind his name. He is none other than Scoob. And then we can move over to the southeast with the dark red, or I guess it's just a bright red kind of color. I don't know. A version of red. UEF player at 823 rating. His name is Raishini. And he is rocking that UEF as we move over to the yellow Aeon going first, second, third, and fourth. Land, it is none other than me. It is Willow. Now we can go ahead and make our way south with the other team, the team two going first land as a dark blue seraphim, worst fashion. And having 1222 rating behind his name, it is none other than crazy. And man, I'm really struggling with speaking today. Then over to the west of him, we have ourselves a purple Cybern going first to land. He is 1092 rated, and his name is Abysmal55. And then over to the west of him, we have an 872 rated light blue UEF going first land by the name of Recovering a Ninju. And then last but not least, we have ourselves a Cyan Cybren going first land. And he has a great name and a great rating of 1240. And it is none other than Noob Dragoon. And with all of our players introduced, we can go ahead and take a quick peek at the map. Of course, we need to turn on the mini map for some reason. It keeps getting disabled for me. But we have a calm amount of reclaim, about 30,000 on this 10 by 10 kilometer map. So these players are going to be able to scoop up a lot of mass very early on, get up to those T2 and T3 phases of the game very, very quickly, and have a lot of eco behind them. There are not a lot of mexes on the map, so these players gonna have to build tall but they will have all of the resources to do so near their main base we of course see recovering a new uh, uh recovering a ninju over here in the middle building up a mechs he's trying to expand quickly we also have raishini moving forward with his commander and then we have a lot of commanders staying in their bases except for on team two we have a decent number of players moving out we have players like abysmal and crazy moving out a little bit north of their base but on the northern team we have a lot of players just staying in their main base willow in particular spending a lot lot of time building up in the main base building a lot of factories gonna have to see how that works out for them as these players moving out a little bit earlier may be able to get a bit more aggression down get a little bit more map control if they play their cards right meanwhile we have engineers heading out for everybody in every single direction it's gonna be a lot of reclaim going in th to these players coffers right now on the rec reclaim charts we have noob, Gra noob dragoon and willow in this slot and this slot respectively mirror slots getting the vast majority of the reclaim so far both of them near 1500 or at 1500 reclaim also overall economy so far here in the early game it's a pretty heavy bias towards this southern team so moving those commanders out really helping them grab up mexes a little bit earlier now of course these players are going to want to develop up going to want to get all of their bird their birds their ducks in a row i guess birds in a row would work uh and get their production online so that way they can start attacking each other with strength t2 max is coming out from multiple players already including willow raishini i believe we also have a t2 max down here actually a couple of them coming out from recovering a ninju who has just neglected to build any land units gonna have to see if that hurts him 
as right now Scoob has really gotten into T1 Landspan. Four factories already fully producing. He's sitting on the lowest mass in the game, but he definitely has the highest unit count, so he's really going for this early game spam. Willow also starting to get out a lot of spam, so is Noob Dragoon. The southern team really kind of neglecting unit spam, though. There's three players who don't really have any armies built up, and the northern team has multiple players getting relatively large armies built up here in the early game. Now Scoob moving out aggressively with the commander, wants to take this mechs, wants to have all of these units pouring out of the base behind him to be used aggressively with that commander. And now we have our first upgrade on the way, it's range for Willow. And that is going to be the first upgrade that will most likely finish here. I think that Willow might be power stalling, no not quite yet. Are we going to see a pause? It's what you want to do if you're getting a, an upgrade like this. You don't want to stall. You pause it. And yes, we do see the pause coming out from Willow there. So apparently does not have the power generation to deal with this. We also have pauses on multiple things now coming out from Scoob. Willow deciding to pause the commander instead of the factories. Maybe mathed it out really quick and realized that using... Well, actually, I've, I've built so much power here. I think I should be able to afford it if I pause the factories. But that's okay. No real threat on the horizon as of the moment. Just going to get that upgrade a little bit later. Scoob, on the other hand, already about to finish that speed upgrade. Damage and range now on the way for a, recovering a ninju. And, of course, a few artillery pieces coming out. Going to be able to kill off these. Point defense is Willow. Is Noob Dragoon doing anything similar? No, not quite yet. So just not going to be able to take over these mechs in the short term. And going to have to keep eyes and see if people can do that. This mech's got taken. Seems an engineer died to that point defense. Yeah, that point defense got one kill. Very proud of itself, I'm sure. Any of these getting kills? No, they have not yet. And of course, kind of just waiting to see what's going to go on here. Nobody's really fighting. We have a few units scrimmaging here in the middle between Rashini and Recovering and Ninju. The two hardest names in the game are right up against each other. Crazy is out here way far with his commander and currently now working on T2 Air. What about the other side? We already have T2 Air finished up and a Swift Wind already out even for Captain Turtle. So damage and range now on the way for recovering a ninju. Speed and range already finished up for Scoob. Range finished up for Willow and speed now on the way as we have our first little encounter of calm on unit action. We have Abysmal 55 gunning down. A lot of the Aurora out from Finboy Willow even getting a nice juicy overcharge there. And this is really going to hurt Willow a little bit here. Not going to have all of those units and also has a heavy mix of support units. A lot of artillery, a lot of AA there, but still does have a decent number of Aurora in that mix. Speed now about to finish up with the speed and range upgrade. Scoob is now getting aggressive, moving forward, firing shots down into the Mantis of Noob, Dra Noob Dragoon. That's a beautiful color on a all right faction. Not the best faction, but Cybran's pretty cool in my book. And of course, Scoop now going to start making some headway, now going to be able to get aggressive, has had the unit spam going on a little bit longer than everybody else. It's slowed down quite a bit thanks to him being in what I assume is a mass stall. Yeah, he's in a mass stall trying to get some eco up. Is already capping his first T2 mechs. That seems a little bit ambitious there. Would have rather seen him spend that on more mechs upgrades, considering it costs about the same as a mechs upgrade to cap a mechs, and only gives you, with a T2 mechs, about three more mass per second, versus the five or six more that you get for getting a T2 mechs upgrade itself. And now we have a recovering a ninja with that gun damage and range upgrade, now starting to fire shots into all of these spam units out from Rashini. But Rashini has now got a T2 engineer out onto the field and is starting to build up triads. Gonna have to see if he can build up enough in time. Willow seemingly wants to come down and try and help out Rashini against this. Rashini also already up to T2 land production. Now Willow caught out in a very upsetting position. There's two unupgraded comms up against the one comm of Willow who is already falling close to the yellow HP, but Abysmal already in yellow HP. Having to pull his Auroras back to him is Willow. Things are going all right right now for him. He's getting a little bit messed up by all of these units. 
down to about 5,000 HP, Abysmal a little bit below that as well, and all of these units out from Willow are gonna end up dying here, and unfortunately, this is gonna be a huge reclaim field for Crazy and Abysmal, and they're already getting to work reclaiming it all up. So Willow, with a little bit of a tactical blunder there, is gonna be unhappy with the state of the game on that one. Now, Willow still trying to scrimmage over here. Scoob still getting aggressive, but now has to contend with Hoplites, which could be a big problem if Noob Dragoon can manage to micro them properly. And now, recovering a Ninju has come through the middle, managed to kill off a Triad, and push back all of this unit spam and the attempted fire basing coming out from Raishini. And he's also accidentally built, a, or I guess on purpose, built a ton of T1PD. Seems like he was maybe trying to build walls and instead built T1PD. Scoob now over here with the Guncom trying to push back, recovering a Ninju. These players are all building up. Let's go ahead and check in on the reclaim after the early game. We have Abysmal at 5.2 thousand, Captain Turtle at 4.8 thousand, Noob Dragoon at 4.4 thousand, Willow at 4.2 thousand, and everybody else below 4 thousand. Overall incomes, we have Captain Turtle at 52, 50 for Crazy, Finboy Willow at, of course, f around 50 themselves. So we have a lot of people getting up to that stage where they can really afford a lot of T2 spam. And you now see Willow setting up a lot of T2 production in the main base and even setting up some forward production over here. And almost all of it is going T2, so really wants to play the T2 phase of the game very heavily. Meanwhile, we have much the same happening over here with Scoob. Scoob gets setting up T2 production. T2 production we've already seen is online for Noob, Dra Noob Dragoon. No T2 production just yet coming out from recovering a Ninju. He doesn't even have the T2 HQ just yet. Playing very aggressively with that gun upgrade on the commander. Trying to push back these Mongeese, these pillars. Try and push back these fortifications and take some territory away from Raishini. But needs to be careful because Scoob can always just circle back around and start dealing with him. Over here to the east, we have T2 Engineers building up Cerberus for Abysmal. And Willow was looking as though he wanted to try and fight it there, but couldn't. Taking a drink there. Make sure you stay hydrated, everybody. Now, of course, we have a transport out from Noob Dragoon, transporting up to this plateau. He's going to put a hoplite down. Unfortunately, though, this hoplite is going to be within range of some T1 units. It will be able to kill them all off, but it's going to take a heavy chunk of HP damage here for it. And actually, it's deciding to try and target down a anti-air, and that's just not really the play here. These Aurora trying to kill it. The Aurora may be able to get it. Oh! We almost had a trade there. Here in the middle, we now have Scoob and Recovering a Ninju fighting it out. Lots of T1PD still going up for Recovering a Ninju. He's he's kind of just going with the, I'm going to move forward and build T1PD behind me using this gun comm strategy. Not quite sure how well that's going to work out for him, though. Now, Willow currently repairing something. Yeah, going to try and finish up this mechs. And in the middle, large fight now breaking out. Scoob showing up with these Obsidians. Obsidian's extremely strong at this stage of the game. Going to be able to get that high alpha damage and those very, very tanky units out onto the field and use them aggressively. But Scoob's spam has really slowed down since making the transition to T2. And just doesn't really have the units on the field right now. We have a lot of T2 production set up for Willow. Can Willow afford it? Currently the highest mass player in the game. And stalling quite heavily. Needs to pause some of this and continue to get Eco up. But Willow going for Chrono Dampener. A very spicy upgrade. Gonna have to see if that works out for him. And over here to the west, Scoob still trying to toy with the idea of fighting this army out from Noob, Noob Dragoon. A recovering a Ninju. Firing his damage in range gun at everybody in front of him. Now, re 
recovering a Ninju. He has so many T1 PD here, but they're just gonna be to start getting killed off by T2 PD and Flapjacks, so this investment really not working out too well for him. Wonder what the reasoning behind it is, as Scoob is getting very aggressive with the comm, but I'm a little bit worried for him. He's kept the comm relatively far away from his army, needs to be careful. Chrono Dampener about to finish up for Willow as the PD creep out from Abysmal. Well, it's getting abysmal for Willow. And Chrono Dampener going to finish up right about now. He's going to be able to get aggressive. The damage and range comm of a Ninju already up to four ranks of veterancy. He's just constantly kept it firing at things, but not over committing. He's doing very well with that commander. Now Finboy Willow going to be pushing forward with all of these units. He has Chrono, so any responding units out from Abysmal will not do very well, but also have to take into account these Cerberus. They are kind of tickle cannons. They don't have the greatest damage, but they are just constant, consistent damage coming out for Abysmal, and the army for Abysmal is kind of quickly evaporating, but now there's this huge group of Rhinos right here, which could pose a threat to Willow's Calm. does have his own Obsidians, set up over here and we also have Medusa stunning up some of these units of Willows and Willow's army is just kind of evaporated before him he's taken some ground but he's kind of just left a reclaim field here for Abysmal and over to the west Noob Dragoon now starting to fire onto Scoop's comp Scoop needs to be careful that's a lot of rhinos that's some hoplites he's almost dead down to 2,000 HP, he overcharges, he's about to get another rank of veterancy, he does get it just in time to save his life. Meanwhile, over here to the east, the army out from Abysmal is now starting to evaporate before his eyes, but there's a lot of Cerberus here, they just need to focus down onto that commander, but the commander is now starting to kill off the Cerberus for Willow. And Abysmal now pushing forward with a T2 commander, trying to scare Willow off. Willow is going to need to be careful here. Once these Cerberus all decide to target that commander, it's not gonna do too well. We now have Asylum starting to show up in mass for Willow. One goes down, but another one already set up here. Another overcharge can just take it out though. And a lot of units have died over here in this constant fight. Willow and Abysmal continue to go at it, go against each other. Just constantly throwing units. Now Willow getting some reclaiming engineers on the front line as Crazy shows up with a comm and starts overcharging, trying to help out Abysmal. And a bunch of gunships now starting to come out of the factory of Crazy. He's also got a lot of interceptors to shut down any form of air-to-air -air combat here. And that's a whole lot more gunships and Willow is in trouble down to 11,000 HP. Those four ranks of veterancy are really gonna help out here. And that regeneration gonna help out as well. There's already some mobile flak, but will it be enough? And Asylum shows up just in time to tank a little bit of HP for that commander. Asylum needs to keep moving with the commander. The flak now targeted, the Asylum goes over the flak to stop the flak from dying as quickly. The gunships are slowly dying out, slowly falling apart here. And the shield does keep Willow alive, but will he stay alive long enough? There's still a lot of gunships on his commander down to 4,500 HP and falling quickly, falling down into the 3,000s. A couple more flak gonna show up. Will it be in time? He's down to 2,000 HP. He's getting close to just going down here. 700, 600 shield flicks on just in the nick of time. Two more ascendants show up to protect him. That Asylum most likely going to go down soon, but another one shows up to protect this commander. And these flak are going to end up killing off all of the gunships in the nick of time. There's more going to be coming, but they're not going to have a chance against all of the shielding and the flak there for Willow. Meanwhile, over here to the west, Noob Dragoon already to T3, completely skipping the idea of Loyalists and going straight for Bricks. He wants to stop this commander of Scoob from being too much, too, too useful here and now recovering a ninju he's moved his comm from that middle area and that could have been a mistake a lot of units out from raishini now going to start trying to push forward they need to be careful and they need to, need to take it slow killing off these t1 pd but if he can pd creep and deal with this this could be very strong willow now sending the comm to the west trying to help out his ally raishini from recovering a ninju's assault with the comm but recovering a ninju has no real support here and willow moves forward he 
does have the Asylums there, which each add a bunch of HP, but Overcharge can be extremely powerful against them. 3,500 HP each. And now Willow extremely close to the Commander of Recovering a Ninja, but he's not getting any damage down onto the Commander of Willow. And in come the gunships trying to help out. The three flak sitting right here will make quick work of them, but they do take a lot of health off of these shields that Willow is using. There's four shields in the area. They all need to recover. A recovering a ninja does not have overcharges and is not overcharging Willow's shield. So these four shields still managing to stay up. A couple of them bound to flick back on here soon. Needs to be careful, needs to keep them in the back. Doesn't want to lose them, but Willow basically is just a commander and shields doesn't really have anything else here to shoot the ground and there's a huge army now showing up AA has been thrown up by Raishini trying to help against the possible threat of gunships recovering a ninju pushing Willow back he's trying to kill off the yellow Aeon player but Willow has managed to get the last rank of veterans he is up to 8000 HP and recovering a ninju is lower on HP now, so that dance with death that Willow was doing, seemingly working out at the moment, even has an obsidian now to help out, and recovering a ninju goes down! At the 20 minute mark, our first ejection, and Willow the shield juggler has managed to survive through quite the, quite the storm there. And now Harbingers for Scoob in combination with that Guncom are going to be able to push forward and start trying to kill off all of this production. A T2 Land HQ, the only one right now of UEF tech for Noob Dragoon since it, re it belonged to recovering a Ninju. Going down to those Harbingers. And now Willow starting to push forward with the Commander. 7,000 HP. It's deceptive. It looks like there's not much HP there, but... Half HP on a 5 vet com is still quite a bit. Remember to stay hydrated, everybody. Now, Scoob. Trying his best to keep the bricks from overwhelming him. Does have a lot of Harbingers here, so if a fight does break out, he will be in a decent position. But I think he wants to wait. He's building up sniper bots in the back line. He wants to wait for those sniper bots to show up so he can pick off the bricks with a lot less issue. So he's just going to use the comm to tank for his harbingers. And Willow now, out of nowhere, has just kind of materialized a huge T2 army and is now starting to push forward. He was the highest eco player for a while, but now has fallen down. Quite a bit has stopped ecoing, wants to play this T2 phase very heavily, and is now pushing forward with an impressive army. T3 now on the way for Abysmal, that's most likely going to need to be cancelled. If he doesn't cancel it right now and start running, he's for sure dead. And he does do so. And all of these obsidians now going to push in, this shield not going to protect him very much. But there's two strap bombers sitting here, and I don't think Willow has any idea about it. Does see the strap bombers. And there is some air for Captain Turtle. Let's see how much. We have 13 ASF. Crazy is sitting on only four. So as long as Captain Turtle responds, Willow should be fine. Willow does have an asylum here, but there's three strap bombers firing on him. And oh no, one more strap bomb lands and he's dead. I think Willow's dead. He's about to kill Abysmal too. But Willow is going to go down to a strap bomber and he does and wipes the board of all these units that were around him. His entire base has been handed over to Scoob preemptively. And Scoob now needs to get all of this online and working. Now gonna start working on T3 land production. He already has the T3 HQ himself, the magic of having the same tech as the player who died. And the strap bombers do get shot down, but it's a little bit too little and it's a little bit too late. And Willow really getting full of himself. Thank God too confident after the miracle play a few moments ago and pushed forward. And here in the middle, we have Raishini pushing forward with a T2 force. I mean, there are some T3 units start showing up to start to defend, but I think Raishini can get in here and deal some real damage if he so pleases. 
And this eastern side and middle side for Team 2. It's just so light on ground play right now. In the west, Noob Dragoon and Scoob have been fighting it out quite heavily. And we now have Harbingers being produced over here in the east. As well as the obligatory support units, Ascendants and Asylums, always good to have with all of your Aeon forces. And as we cross the 25 minute mark, we're no closer to finding out who's gonna win. It's a 3v3. The highest rated player left in the game is of course Noob Dragoon down here in the Southwest, but he's really struggling up against Scoob. And now Scoob with the double eco is in a very strong position. He's trying to build himself up a T3 Pigeon there, and then maybe could go for something like experimental spam. And overall, the air game looking very good for the Northern team as well. If Captain Turtle cannot manage to, to lose track of his ASF as long as he keeps out on the field and maybe even gets aggressive with his ASF, he should be good for a little while. But the Southern team right now, I think, is doing a lot better overall with helping each other out they're always moving units to help each other out they're playing with a lot of teamwork meanwhile the northern team everybody's kind of playing isolated so far doing their own thing it's a lot of pd built up on this cliff and now harbingers along with t2 forces left over from the from the Willow days are starting to push forward and there's just not really much here to stop them. Heavy shield now on the way for Scoob. He's going to be an extremely tanky commander with that. He's at five ranks of veterancy with 16,500 HP on the comm. And he's going to be sitting on quite a little bit more here in a second once he gets this upgrade. He's going to have 25,000 HP on top of that to play with. Meanwhile, over here in the east, Scoob's Harb is starting to push forward. And as I said earlier, there just doesn't seem to be too much in the way to stop this. There are some Loyalists over here, but Loyalists trade very poorly into Harbs, and if he does move to respond to this, he's going to leave himself open to Raishini, who is trying to pressure with his own T3-4s. And Scoob, sitting here in T2 PD fire, not very good, but does now decide to move forward. Going to use those Harbingers to kill off all these Engineers, kill off all this PD. May lose a Harb or two in the process, but it's a price you pay doesn't even a very nice trade there for him and now we're gonna send out a couple of t2 tanks to deal with these t3 mexes over here on this eastern side the land production right now for scoob is seemingly overwhelming he's winning over here on the east he has such a formidable force over here in the west it's a lot of micro but as long as he can keep up with it he should be good and he's now starting to build GCs. How's his economy looking? He's about to be mass stalling, but it won't be too terrible a mass stall, and this GC is going up quick. And Reclaim should be able to help him out, especially if he starts reclaiming with the Harbs. Now sending the Harbs out to the east, wants to kill off these T3 mexes. There's now some gunships over in the east starting to kill off some of the eco of Scoob. We need the ASF. Oh, from Captain Turtle to respond, but he may not have the ASF lead anymore. He's at 22 versus Crazy sitting at 26, so he doesn't even have the ASF lead as of the moment. But these gunships just going to get some free reign. More flak is going to pop out, and the flak can be used relatively effectively to deal with this. I'd like to see Scoob maybe start spamming up some T3 anti-air stations, some SAMs. And the air fight breaks out, and oh no, it's a disaster! 
The Coronas out from Captain Turtle are falling very quickly to the ASF of Crazy. But Scoob now starting to push in towards the base. And this could be very, very dangerous. I'm not really seeing anything that can deal with this, except for a spider that's about to finish up for Noob Dragoon. And that could be an answer here. And Scoob's Calm is here. But that would be very, very dangerous. Scoob needs to get in and deal as much damage as possible. If he hasn't scouted that, he is in danger. And he hasn't. He has no idea of the threat that's looming over his head right now. He needs to... He needs to push forward and get as much damage as he can because his calm won't be able to run away from that. As bombers out from Captain Turtle are taking out some of the eco of Noob Dragoon. That monkey lord is seemingly indecisive in the direction it wants to choose. And Scoob is pushing forward with that commander, still trying to get a lot of damage done, eating some T1 PD fire. There's a lot of harves here, so maybe Scoop can start running away the second he sees the Monkey Lord. He should be able to see it very soon. The T3 economy here is most likely going to stay alive. Scoop needs to start moving right now, and a bunch of gunships show up. Scoop's going to start running away with his comm, but that's a lot of gunships. His shield going down to nearly 10,000 HP, but the flak here deals with the gunships pretty well. And the Harb's kind of just being sacrificed. The monkey could start chasing down the commander right now. And where is the support? Is there anybody on his team who can help him out here? Doesn't seem like it. The T3 mexes are slowly going down, and they do all go down there. So four T3 mexes, but that, that's really not worth it. If Scoob ends up dying to this monkey lord, he's throwing as many overcharges as he can in. But he's not going to make it, and Scoob's going to go down to the Monkey Lord out from Noob Dragoon. He almost even managed to kill it, got it down to 17,000 HP. Maybe if the Harbs had focused on it, he could have done well. Raishini calling GG. There's a GC already done, and another one started up right now for Captain Turtle, so does have an answer to that Monkey Lord right now. And now this eastern base handed over to Raishini, the base formerly belonging to Willow. Oh, wow. I just noticed something wrong with the stream. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, I'll fix that after this. All right. By the way, this is streamed live. I do live stream casts now. And over here to the east, we have a large push now formulating for Raishini, but there's just so many point defense now spammed up by Abysmal. It's going to be quite the abysmal time to push through this, although it is Cerberus, so realistically the Harbs can deal with these PD very quick once they get in range. There's also bricks coming out every now and then. As long as he moves slowly and just keeps pushing forward, the Harbingers should be able to deal with all these T2 PD. You can see how long they take even to kill off a Titan. And now Captain Turtle has finished up another GC. He's sitting on two. If he brings them together and kills off this monkey, there's really not much to stop it. I mean, another monkey lord. One monkey lord doesn't even deal with the GC. But now there's a chicken on the field for crazy. He's pushing forward with it. He's going to be able to kill off this entire force. Unfortunately, though, for the southern team, the chicken tends to kill off all the reclaim. I mean, there's going to be a decent bit here, but... A lot less than there would have been if it was one of the other experimentals. New Dragoon now on two Monkey Lords. The GC over here, extremely close to the Monkey Lord. Uh, Rashini has a bunch of Ravagers set up here in the middle, so I don't think they should be too worried about this Monkey Lord getting anything done. And it's starting to look a lot like a mass gift. Oh, the GC might be getting stuck on a cliff here. And the Monkey Lord strays into the range of some Percivals and some Ravagers. 
And it's gonna go down. It could try and focus down the T3 HQ, but it wouldn't have had time anyways. really quick and those of you watching the video please uh, uh it's just gonna be a quick jump for you sorry about this a little bit unprofessional i know okay we are back let's get a stock of this situation let's look at reclaim really quick Nineteen thousand for crazy abysmal at seventeen thousand fifteen thousand for the dead finboy willow fourteen thousand for raishini Captain Turtle at 14,000 and 13,000 for Noob Dragoon. Let's look at the Eco's Captain Turtle at a colossal 538 mass a second. Full T3 mechs in that main base. We also have a chicken here pushing in the middle. 331 for Raishini, as you would expect with two bases. Noob Dragoon, surprisingly, despite getting that second base, I guess he gave a lot of it over to Crazy. Only at 150. Crazy at 251 and 150 for Noob, Dra Noob Dragoon. A huge economic advantage. For this northern team but they are the lowest rated players remaining in the game captain turtle is now up to three gcs i'm not sure if he understands just how much power he's sitting on right now he just needs to push forward to make something happen and here in the middle we of course have gunships out from Raishini trying to deal damage down onto that chicken, not really getting too much done there though. And we also have ASF now being produced, or at least a lot of them handed over to Raishini. And overall, the air game, it's going relatively even, I believe. Crazy sitting at 69 ASF, very nice. And 79 for Captain Turtle. So no, the Northern team has a massive air advantage. And all three GCs have now been transferred over to Raishini, who should just be able to push forward. He also has a very formidable land force. It seems they're a little bit scared here. No anti-nuke being pointed out by Willow. Is there a nuke built? There is not. There's no anti-nuke in any of the bases. Any of these players going for nukes would have been very strong play, but no real interest out from the northern team in that. Captain Turtle has built an experimental unit. He's built a another GC. It's just Galactic Colossi just kind of chilling everywhere and a huge double GZ push with a large supporting army now formulating for Raishini, but he's given a lot of time over to Crazy, who's going to get another GC online very soon. Crazy egoing up very heavily, getting up a lot of T3 mechs over here in the middle of the map. Crazy now has two chickens and a Telemazer out from Abysmal kills off Raishini. Oh no, it's a disaster. There was He was just out of range of his own Ravagers. It could have saved him. Where is he teleporting now? He's teleporting on top of Captain Turtle. Oh no, Captain Turtle, does he have enough? He's trying his best to kill off Abysmal. Abysmal keeps on hitting a shield. He's trying to fire on a Captain Turtle, and they both die! And that is one hell of a anticlimactic ending. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to the Patreons and channel members. You all are all so beautiful. If you liked it, consider subscribing and liking the video. Leave a comment down below telling me how your day has been. This is Willow signing off. Sick of being the